Pediatric Feeding and Swallowing, Module 4. One of five modules covering the complex issues of feeding and swallowing, and just one of the over 100 CEU programs offered by Clinician's View. Watch free previews and get course details to determine what best meets your needs. Gain full access to all of our courses for as little as $177. Visit us at www.clinicians-view.com. Clinician's View presents The ABCs of Pediatric Feeding and Swallowing, Module 4, Feeding and Swallowing Treatment, presented by Rona Alexander, Robert Beecher, Linda A. Klebon, W. Hobart Davies, and Christine Kao. The appropriateness of the child's present feeding process. What are they doing for mealtime feeding right now? Okay. So often that's another thing that you need to make some statement about, be aware of, make some decisions about is, does it appear that this child is getting an adequate base of nutrition? Does it look like the process that's being used is getting that child enough to provide them with an adequate nutritional intake and an adequate base of hydration? Now the problem with any tube, whether it's OG or NG, in the esophagus is that it can act like a wick where the gastric contents can kind of wick up along the tube, not in the tube, but along the tube. So it can, the gastric acid might wick up along the tube into the esophagus and sometimes even up to the upper esophageal sphincter into the pharynx. Most kids you do not have to teach any compensatory maneuvers to. They will figure them out on their own. Okay? And I assure you, a lot of kids, especially when they start going through growth spurts, they start doing maneuvers that are taught to adults. Okay? And you never had to teach them any of it. My goal with any child I see is to make it so they have to do the least amount of compensatory things to be successful and safe in their eating as possible. Because the earlier they learn to compensate, the more it confounds their typical development. Right here, this is the superior surface of the uvula. You're looking down the pharynx here, and the soft palate comes up and closes against the posterior pharyngeal wall. Can we get one more look at it? Now, this is the airspace. That's reduced by about 60%. You should have an airspace that goes, well, almost the size of this circle, but down here. So the problem in terms of reflux affecting respiration is that when acid goes up into the esophagus, which is essentially an alkaline structure, there is a chemical reaction that tells the airway, uh-oh, stuff is coming the wrong way, and protect. So the sphincter tightens, the airway closes, and the bronchioles constrict. But look at what he's doing. I mean, he's really trying to find a way to say, no, 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 please, please, please. This is not the best thing. What I wanted to do is see if I could give him a little better base would it make any difference for him? So I wanted to try to slow the process down and see if I just made a little change in where he was. <laughs> Would that be enough for him to change it a little bit? Now look at his eyes. His head isn't far back, and I'm not holding him now. This is where he could, he could be moving his head but his eyes were going up. But now he's not sure what to do with it. Okay, because he relies on his head being back to use that in his movement. So it gives you inklings about what his tongue is actively able to do, how active his lips really are, okay? And I'm not forcing him to be there, I'm giving his head the feeling of where it can be going just to see what the response is, okay? So that we have an inkling of what 
the issues are for him. Some of the issues are his cheeks and lips don't work all that well. His tongue isn't getting a real effective movement, and nice cupping and really active movement based from him. So we're looking at the different things and what his mom was finding was if I let him get here and if I bring it in, he works his way out. He does, but he's going to get into big trouble. One of the things I said this morning is that one of the most critical things we need to do in order to start to get pastoral activity going and get that trunk aligned and get ultimately head neck oral system uh, the way we want it is to get the base of support um, properly aligned and then hopefully active. So we're going to assume that she's got some adequate mobility around her pelvis and hips to get into a reasonable sitting position. We've maybe done a little bit of work to prepare her base of support. She's not totally inactive. Um, but now we want to come up and do something to help get her trunk even more part of this process. And there's lots of different options. Um, but let's start with one where we actually come onto the trunk on the lateral aspect. Um, my fingers are open and spread. So I'm covering a little bit more surface. I am an, starting out by just shifting her a little bit forward and at the same time trying to help her come into some extension. So my fingers are actually lifting just a little bit up. There we go. But the next thing that I can do, and let's let you get your arms up a little bit. Um, so Rebecca's going to hold her arms up here or play a little. At the same time that I'm doing that little bit of lift, the heel of, there we go, the heel of my hand is actually talking to her hips. So I'm doing a, three things at once here. I've spread my hands. I'm coming in on the lateral aspects of the trunk. I'm lifting up a little bit. And then I'm at the same time talking down to her hips. And if she were to shift her weight to one side, and you can go ahead and do that, I'm going to have to change things a little. I'm going to have to go with her. Now, she actually went into a bit of rotation. So I followed, and that's great. But which hip do I need to talk to? Her right hip. And the hand that's actually going to be most effective to do that is my left hand. So my left hand is actually giving some compression towards her right hip. And my right hand is keeping that lift or elongation so that she doesn't do this. As you're looking at him, I want you to be aware not just of how he looks here, which is pretty narrow in his rib cage. Okay, get that narrowness feel, almost comes to a, an angle in the front, which gives you a, one of those things you'd look for in terms of getting an idea of what the mobility is like in the rib cage, how much they lock up in that upper chest wall area. Um, and notice that the way his shoulder girdle is, it's pretty elevated, okay, pretty close to the old earlobes, not having too much space in between. So he uses a lot of this for stability, uses his asymmetry for stability. Look at his mouth. Look at the posture of his mouth. He's got that semi-open position with the jaw retracted and held in position. He's got cheeks and lips pulled back. You can see that thinness to his lips, that pulling back. And I have no idea where his tongue is, which would say to me it's a little too far back. So that he's probably using a retracted tongue position in order to help him to keep his head where he needs to. Remember we said the extrinsic tongue muscles have a tremendous influence on head and neck. And therefore, they're very easily used muscles to help out. And that's where a lot of kids get stuck with tongue retraction early. So input to the, through the biting surfaces. Um, very important. Choose your biters carefully. Um, choose what you're giving kids carefully, um, not just the, the brushes and stuff that you may use to provide the input, but then also look at what you want them to be able to do and what things they respond to. So you have kids that um, need to have certain textures to be able to bite on. Um, some of the little ones really love this 
kind of a toy. It's called the loop. Um, and it's soft here, and they can bite on here, and they can play and do stuff here. Some of the babies like to suck on the ball ends of it. Um, it's, it's just one of those things that they can get in and not have to work too hard, but it gives them just the right of in, input. Um, there's a number of biters out that are very hard. And what I would suggest to you is you think twice about where you start with. So in order to be able to get lips to close, you're going to be, have to be able to get things through the body to get good body alignment. You're going to have to get good um, shoulder depression. You're going to have to have good neck elongation. You're going to have to have changes in terms of head movement and, head al and alignment. You're going to need to be able to get a sensory awareness for the lips to know when they're in closure and to be able to sustain it. There's all these different pieces. And what we often do too often when people look for cookbooks is that they look for one big general thing that they can just whoop, and there you go. Rather than looking at what you have to build up in order to actually get to that piece. So when we were talking earlier and said, if you're seeing problems with a child dealing with certain textures orally, don't just look at the mouth. You've got to be looking at what the foundation is. Okay? So for kids to be able to support the kind of activities you may be asking from the jaw and the tongue and the cheeks and lips, you better be looking at what that body has to be able to do. Okay? What have they put together in terms of their general abilities through their movement? What have they put together in their overall sensory processing in order to allow for things to change here too? If you're not taking that full picture, you're missing very big pieces in certainly in the child's developmental process. You can't look at typical development and not recognize how intricately connected different aspects of development are. You can't take upper extremity development separate from lower extremity development. It doesn't work. And you can't look at the mouth separate from how the body learns to be able to use the arms and the hands and, and the feet and the legs. So it's all of those things, recognizing that. To find this course, go to clinicians-view.com. Click on CEU Courses. Scroll down to the seminar title. Click on Preview for an extended preview. Click on Details for course description and learning outcomes. And remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. See us on Google Plus and other social media outlets. Clinicians View www.clinicians-view.com